In 2016, I took a trip with my then girlfriend at the time, Rita Mae, to Nicaragua. I really didn't want to go, but secretly, I was really excited for the unknown adventure that awaited. And let me tell you, it was an experience that I will never forget. Along this adventure, we met many people, some of which that we ended up interviewing with the intention to add into an episode for my educational YouTube show, in which you should totally check out if you haven't already. Link is at the top of the description. But in that episode, more than 80% of the great interview content that we shot was not used. But I don't want their perspectives to go to waste, so I'm repurposing the footage for this documentary, Nicaragua, The Real Third World. Okay, let's get this first thing out of the way. Many people often hear third world country and instantly think of the worst possible scenarios, myself included at one point. But this is nothing that Nicaraguan natives aren't already aware of. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, they, they see us here like if we're like non-educated um, right. humans. Okay. And they think that they are better than us. But what they don't know is that people from Nicaragua, they have gone out to, to either Europe or United States and that they have educated themselves, you know what I mean? But when they come here, they just look at us like, you know, they scare, okay, why? Why you come here if you're gonna be, you don't wanna talk to, you don't wanna communicate with the people here in Nicaragua, you know what I'm saying? This is Victor. He works for a tourist tours company and interacts with tourists on a regular basis. So his local foreign insight was very trustable. But there was also Maricela, a political science graduate that was also very aware of the third world country stigma but on a more global scale. Si hablamos de vías de desarrollo, es posible que precisamente por la falta de educación del pueblo y la falta de salud nos llamen así, pero más allá de eso, Nicaragua demuestra ser un pueblo fuerte, un pueblo trabajador, un pueblo que dentro de su afán de supervivencia no es un pueblo en ese honor, en esa lucha tercer mundi, es un pueblo aguerrido, luchador, incluso campesino, pero que nunca se rinde. I don't conceive any one, second or third world. For me, it's just one world. That's are the difference that we have created between ourselves. And that's are the difference that are still separating us. Maricela was without question the most versed on this topic, and I wish you could hear everything that she had to say. But we'll hear from her a bit more later. One of the first people that we met and instantly stood out to us was a man named Raymond. At the time, he worked at the local bakery, but had the ambition of a dragon. I learned to speak English just for two months in my bilingual center of academic. Wow. For two months. That's so oh my good. God. For two months? Yeah, for two months. Yeah. If I can choice about stay here or the United States, I want to move in the United States. I want to do that, why can't do that? Here is very different because you can rent room for $40 or $25. If my friends told me in the United States you have to pay like 100 or, or more dollars in for one run, so it's so, so difficult. And then when I lost my green card and say, oh my God, oh my God, I need money. I need to pay $200 because I want to go to the United States. But when I think about it, I have to pay also my ticket for airplane, my bike, you know, something like that is very, oh my God. And I think about it, no, it's so difficult. I can't do that. So now I'm here, I lost my green card. I have to work every day. I would like to know people from the United States or any country because that one is my job. I'm social, I would like to talk to the people, I would like to know how is the people, so that's it. Raymond was one of the most genuine people that we came across in Nicaragua and was one of the first people that quickly dispelled the years of third world countries are bad bias. It was with Raymond that I realized that he and I had the same goals. When it's all said and done, we all just want to better ourselves. I guess that's just human nature. Raymond mentioned to us several times that he wanted more friends in the United States. So if you have a few minutes, please do me a huge favor and write a friendly email to Raymond. Even if you don't live in the US, I'm sure that he'd love to hear from you. Another rather interesting thing that I found a lot more common than I would have imagined was people who moved from a first world country to Nicaragua. Take Miguel for example, originally from Spain, but moved to Nicaragua in search of something that he considers to be extraordinary. Here, I like the respect to nature. It's like a big park. Here, yeah, it wouldn't exist in where I'm coming from or in the US, no, it's, everything is... Explotado, I don't know how to say exploit. Exploited. Exploited, yeah. yeah. I'm actually from Europe, from Spain. I don't like the robotic life, 
that we live there. Here is quiet, it's like a big park. I like also the culture here. I think even if they are a third world country, they have a lot to say to people. You can find interesting people. And I like also they, they are freedom. Even if they talk about the government and uh, there's a dictatorship or whatever, you can come as a foreigner, invest, and there's a lot of possibilities that doesn't exist anymore in Europe because the government is taking all your money. They don't let you improve. I'm quite happy here in, in Nicaragua cool. for that reason. I also miss other things, uh, but you can, you can have everything. And similar to Miguel's story, we have Paul, who I thought had a really interesting story to tell. Truly, the Nicaraguans are very special people. And I've traveled up and down the Central America, South America a lot. I think Nicaraguans see themselves as really kind of just, you know, very, very poor and very, very, they don't have, they don't, they do not have self-confidence. But I will tell you, they're the most wonderful people that I have ever met. So, I mean, that's one reason why, why I want to move here eventually with my wife. Yes, that's right. Last time we spoke to Paul, Paul was in transition to moving from the United States to Nicaragua. But I'll let him go more in depth as to his reasons why. You know, I, I know a guy here, his, his name is Wilbur. So Wilbur knows how to fish. He knows how to go out in, in, in the lake with nets. He doesn't have fishing rods. He doesn't have GPS, you know, to determine where the fish are. So he just uses nets. And he, he brings in fish for his family and he sells fish. And he keeps on saying to me, you know, I'm a, I'm a poor man, I'm a poor man. I said, no, no, you're a rich man. 99% of Americans would never be able to do that. 99% of Americans don't know how to raise pigs or cattle or chickens or whatever. I mean, 99% of Americans don't have that skill set. So Wilbur, I think, is rich. I think he's far richer than, than he would give himself credit for. The average Nicaraguan is far freer than the average American by a country mile. You know, you can't even have a family farm without some crazy SWAT team coming in and, and raiding you for producing raw milk and selling it to your neighbor. I mean, what, what kind of insanity is that? Can you imagine George Washington's farm being raided because he's selling raw milk to his neighbor? Well, that happens a lot in the United States. There was something that over time became very apparent to me. When I asked JC, a Nicaraguan native who grew up in the United States but moved back to Nicaragua and is now teaching in Nicaragua's capital, how the two countries relate to each other, this is what he said to us. It's made me understand why I appreciate this so much, uh. <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, I mean, it's different. It's not very, they don't relate much. Uh. I don't, you know, that's what I think. It's two different worlds. And that is when I was finally able to grasp it. There is a very magical sensation that comes with being in a third world. It's almost as if the constant surrounding of plant life, bugs, animals, and lack of man-made structures everywhere radiated an energy that put your mind at ease. For the first time, I was able to go to bed when the sun set with no problem. I was okay with just sitting still and conversing for hours. For the first time, I was okay with whatever happened next. Spontaneous rainstorms a horde of neighboring pigs appearing to steal crops, or even being asked to try something that I usually wouldn't. Slowly over time, I detached from my usual urge to be in control of everything. But it is something that I could only appreciate by hanging with the locals for a while. And funny enough, JC unintentionally confirmed this when I asked him about his experience between the United States and Nicaragua. Well, I think in the United States, one is a little bit more sure of things, ah. even if they're not sure. But we're kind of sure in the United States, hey, I'll do this and I'll do that, and I won't do this and I won't do that. Whereas here, specifically in Ometepe, Nicaragua, which is where we are, we have to be subject to nature, to many things we understand we don't control. Things happen because it's nature taking its course. In the United States, we seem to have control over the scenario in our minds, even when we don't have that control, we think we do. Nicaragua is a wonderful country in many ways, full of nature, natural experiences, and down-to-earth people. But make no mistake, the people are not oblivious to their problems. What do we like to change? To make Poverty, improve. education, I don't like the government. We are all clear he is a thief and there is no democracy here, but where, are, where we have democracy? Yeah, the government is, is a thief or whatever, but at least they have security. If you go into Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, they have a big, big problem with Maras. 
these manas they started in US and they went all about in Guatemala, Salvador, Honduras. But this Daniel Ortega is he has a, a wall. Mm. They don't let them in. But yeah, he wants to, to get to get the country mm. for his family. Mm. I don't like that. I don't like it. Mm. But it could be bad, worse. Mm. At least we have security there and that's very important. On the government that we have right now, he's we have the a stable. We've been stable in the country, but um, they handle things different here than over there. They got more order in the United States, and here they don't have no no order. You know what I mean? It's not stable. Right, right. What I would like to see for Nicaragua is that it became more cleaner. Mm. If you would, that people would have a perspective of not contaminating as much, being a little friendlier to the environment. We're very blessed, mm. if you would, that we're not privy to lots of economic wealth. We're mm -hmm. privy to a lot of natural resources. And because we've always had them, we don't seem to appreciate them as much. Just like when you grow up around money, you can tend to think it's only money. It's not a big mm. deal. Yeah. So it's kind of the thing that you kind of, you know, what you have the most of, you kind of see as, ah, take for granted. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I would like to see some economic growth. But before I see the economic growth, I'd like us to have some ideas. You're asking about what are we going to do with this economic growth? Are we only going to go to McDonald's and the Walmarts and... Si pudiera responder esto como un sueño, si yo pudiese cambiar algo, cambiaría la conciencia de ser. Porque en nicaragüense, históricamente, el pueblo es el resultado de una volatilidad política a lo largo de toda, la, de toda su historia, de los acontecimientos. Y el pueblo ha olvidado lo grande que es debido a esa misma volatilidad política que ha significado la corrupción institucional, Entonces cambiaría eso, cambiaría la pobreza, cambiaría la enfermedad, cambiaría la ignorancia por salud y educación y cambiaría la falta de voluntad política por verdaderos líderes que le devuelvan a este, a este país su brillo y su grandeza. There is no question about it. With the United States versus Nicaragua, they are two totally different worlds. But one of my biggest takeaways is that the third world label is dismissive. Nicaragua is much more than its generic poverty-stricken, health-related issue criticism that it gets. From my experiences while in Nicaragua, the people there overall are more empathetic than most people I've met. When you get a flat tire, anyone who sees you comes to aid you. When you're lost or need directions, you have a crowd of people willing to direct you. When you wave to anyone, you're guaranteed a smile and a wave in return. But unfortunately, this isn't something that you hear often with the third world label. Ultimately, there's a great deal of luck in this game of life. Some of us are lucky to be born in a country that is rich with resources, while others aren't. But that doesn't make one greater or lesser of a person. I've learned that it makes me a lesser person to dismiss someone for their luck. As humans, we all have the same potential. But I think my biggest takeaway above all is that no matter how many times you try and convince someone with a bias otherwise, the only real way to get rid of a bias is to go through the experience for yourself. I know you think of you know, Nicaragua, you know, a bunch of Sandinistas in the jungle ready to, you know, shoot, shoot anybody. That's just not true. I mean, it's, you know, it's very interesting. I think it was JC who told me about a friend who had, who lives here as American, who basically went to back home to America, was inter interviewed by a customs agent, and he said, he said, so why do you live in a communist country? And it's like, the guy said, hey, dude, you know, something to the effect that it's not communist. I mean, well, we'd like you to visit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, give Nicaragua a chance, I think. Come on down here. I know that we do get mixed reviews. Uh, some being dangerous, some being, hey, it's the jungle, it's Africa, it's everything. And Africa is a beautiful place from what I've been told. I've never visited it. Um, but just come down here with an open mind and decide for yourself what you see. And there's good and bad everywhere, including here. But I think we're pretty much on the good side a heck of a lot more than in the so give it a chance. Uh, don't think about Nicaragua as an unsafe country. That's completely fake. It's just made up by governments that are against socialist countries. Politics are shit. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Very cool, man. Humans, we are all the same. 
<laughs> that's, that's, that's it the right one. there, man. <laughs> okay, guys. First, this is the real life. If you want to change your life, you have to be better every day. You have to do. Um, I have to tell you in, in Spanish. Right. Tienes que ser tú mismo para lograr lo que quieres. No cambies por nada ni por nadie. Al fin y al cabo, las últimas decisiones las tienes tú mismo. First of all, hello. Yeah. I'm Marcela from Nicaragua. I want to say that as humanity, we got a big challenge because time flies. Unfortunately, time flies. We are destroying right now the world. And we have to understand that Mother, that Earth is not part of us. We are part of Earth. We are part, all we are part of Mother Earth. I think our best goal is to embrace each other and to recognize that our difference must be the things that can unify us. We have to recognize that we got a spiritual sense that we are not applying our life. So because of that, I invite you to come, to travel, to go beyond your barriers, to go beyond your, sometimes your mental barriers, and to, to put away the prejudice, to put away the hate, to put away the negative things, the, those things that separate us to break the wall, as Pink Floyd said. Oh, we have to break the wall and I don't know, I believe world is for all of us. So I believe in peace and harmony and love and I invite you to to live in those, con in those idea because it's good, it's even good for health. It's even good for humanity. We require, humanity right now require an overdoses of love and solidarity and, and hearts. So come to Nicaragua and you will recognize that poverty is not in our material way of living. Poverty is, a, is in our spiritual way of living. If you come here, you will see many poor churches, houses. You will see poverty with your eyes. But you will see that beyond that there's a po uh, population with soul. People that in their poverty, they will always offer you something. And mostly I smile. So let's share all together what is good for humanity. Let's share kindness.